Friend, welcome. My name is Pastor Carl Joseph from Denver House of Prayer. Today, I'm going to teach on the power of thanksgiving. You know, the Bible says, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. And thanksgiving is not only a part of entering into God's presence, but also crucial to receiving from Father God. Okay, now I'm going to read from uh, the 17th chapter of the book of Luke from verses 11 through 19, and I'm reading from the New King James Version. But it's very important, friend, that when we petition God, we remember the aspect of thanksgiving. Why? Because thanking him is really expressing our faith that we believe that he can do what we have petitioned, right? Thanksgiving is really proof or evidence that you really believe God is working on your behalf, behind the scenes, on the thing that you prayed for, because you're thanking him in advance for what he is going to provide. Amen. Now, Philippians 4, 6 through 8 talks about be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, Make your requests known to God. And then the peace of God that surpasses all understanding is going to guard our heart and mind in Christ Jesus. Amen. But notice that after we have cast our care, because Jesus cares for us, then we enter into petition or supplication with thanksgiving. Did you catch that? We're thanking God in advance for what he is going to do. And friend, Thanking God the Father is extremely powerful. I'm going to give a specific example here of that, okay? Now, I'm reading from verse 11 of chapter 17, and it's the story of 10 lepers cleansed. Now, it happened as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Then, as he entered a certain village, there met him 10 men who were lepers who stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Now, these Samaritans lived in the northern part of Judea and in the southern Galilee region. And they were a remnant of the northern kingdom of Israel that fell about a hundred years before Judah fell. Okay, the northern kingdom was conquered by Assyria. The southern kingdom was conquered by Babylon back in the day. Okay, hundreds of years prior to this text, to the occurrence of this passage. But friend... The Samaritans were looked down upon by the Jews. They were an ethnic group that had fallen into a measure of idolatry. However, the Samaritans claimed that, no, we are still the pure lineage. We are of the tribes of Ephraim and Manasseh. We are really the true tribes. And so there was this conflict between the Jews and Samaritans throughout the Gospels. You can see various examples of that. And you're going to see shortly that there were Samaritans involved in this encounter with Jesus Christ. But friend, God loves everybody. He loves immigrants. He loves all ethnic groups. Whether you're black, white, yellow, or brown, no matter where you're coming from, man, he loves you, okay? There seems to be this rise of racism or provoking of racism in the press recently where people are really trying to be divided, uh, and we need to get out of that mindset in the body of Christ. And I'll show you here that Jesus couldn't care less about your color, your background, your ethnicity. He loves all people equally. Amen. So let's read further. Verse 14. So when he saw them, he said to them, go show yourselves to the priest. And so it was that as they went, they were cleansed. Okay. These lepers approached Christ. He said, go and show yourself to the priest. That would be confirmation that they were healed. But notice it says, as they went, they were cleansed. So they heard the word, faith rose. And they're thinking, well, hang on a second. He's saying that if we go and show ourselves to the priest and make a move in that direction, we can be healed. And sure enough, as they went, they were cleansed. Friend, God is waiting for you to make a move in a direction. And as soon as you make that move, you're going to receive what you've been believing for. Okay? Faith without works is dead. We need to put action behind what we believe. Amen? Now, in verse 15, and this is really the crux of this teaching, the power of thanksgiving. It says, And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet giving thanks. And he was a Samaritan. Now, friend, there were 10 lepers. They went off to show themselves to the priest. One returned. 
okay, got on his face, started giving Jesus the glory, started thanking and praising Jesus for what he did. Okay, this is powerful. Get this. So Jesus answered and said, were there not ten cleansed, but where are the nine? Were there not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, arise, go your way. Your faith has made you whole. Now listen, friend, if you were a leper, you had to shout out, unclean, unclean, when you came into the proximity of people. It was a contagious disease. It's not that prevalent in the West, but it's still prevalent in the earth even today. But friend, you can be healed of leprosy, but still have digits missing, right? I mean, the other nine were healed, right? The other nine were healed. They could have had parts of their body missing, but they were healed. But get this, the guy who came back, the guy who gave thanks to Jesus Christ, he was made whole. And friend, that's powerful. You need to be made whole. If you have an addiction, you need to be made whole. If you have a heart issue, resentment, bitterness, anger, unresolved heart issues, not only do you need to be healed of that addiction, but you need to be made whole as if you've never suffered from it. And friend, that is the power of thanksgiving. That is something that is often missed. This aspect of giving glory to God and worshiping him. And oh friend, if you do that on a regular basis, I'm not talking about just church. I'm talking about worshiping God in your household. When you get up in the morning, just start thanking and praising the Lord for the day and just say, Lord, you know, I thank you for the many blessings that you have given me. And friend, if you have that mindset, you'll be more appreciative of the things that come across your path, okay? But here is a very explicit example in Luke 17 of one leper who came back to give thanks and he was made whole and Jesus is like, where's the other nine? Didn't I just heal a whole bunch of these guys? And only one foreigner, one Samaritan returned, right? The one who, hey, you know, there was a contention as to whether the Samaritans were really Jews and were really of the pure lineage of Judea, okay? But what did Jesus say? He didn't say, hey, We're not going to heal this foreigner. Who does he think he is? No, Jesus loved that foreigner. He loved the Samaritan, okay? He loves every ethnicity, every color, race, and creed. And he himself was born in what? In Israel, so he would have been tanned at least, amen? He wasn't a white guy. I mean, he would have been from that region. So, friend, I just want you to get this power of thanksgiving and the fact that Jesus loves all and that he is no respecter of persons. Amen. I am Pastor Carl Joseph from Denver House of Prayer. I'd love to see you. Uh, Come visit us, all right, at DHOP, at one of our services. Go to dhopdowntown.org, and you can find out when. God bless you, friend, and have a great day.